Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the higher level conceptual ideas that surround being consultants when you function as a radiologist. You know, this includes the work of image interpretation, but also like in, in also goes into the larger diagnostic and care process that surrounds the reporting of studies. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the sort of mindset and just the underlying philosophical disposition that's useful to have if you want to do the best thing for patients while you're functioning in that role. Um, we'll talk a bit about how we add value. Um, by going beyond just the confines of the current imaging study into the broader patient context and seeing that even exams that are negative, normal, stable, um, are opportunities to look deeper and really make a difference. Um, sometimes the radiologist uh, and the sort of things that we see on imaging you know, allow us to play a role where we really direct care one way versus the other and can coordinate having you know, uh, you know, guiding patient care in a way that optimizes um, and makes and it increases the chances of the best outcome for the patient. Um, there's kind of considerations around follow-up and coordination uh, or correlation across various aspects of information in the patient record that uh, you know, and 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 what's going to happen to the patient that that when you are on the seat of the radiologist, you can really make a difference. Um, okay, so let's begin. Uh, an important thing to, to think about in terms of, you know, how we can have a sustainable, you know, long-range impact in patient care and actually have value in a way that keeps, radi you know, radiologic work from becoming commoditized um, and that, that allows us to always stay relevant. And, and, and it's important to remember that first we need to function as a physician and, and think about what's going to be the best thing for the patient. You know, and, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily always mean just reporting what is on the imaging study. It's considering the larger context of patient goals, their course of treatments, um, you know, the, uh, you know, goals of care, you know, the, you know, what really is going to make a difference in the patient outcome, right? And then recognizing also is that medical imaging is just part of the diagnostic process. There's a lot of processes that we're not going to see necessarily on, you know, diagnostic imaging and recognizing that we have to look, you know, to the left and to the right at that lab values, at clinical suspicion, risk stratification, things like this, and that put and we have to put all that together, you know, with what we know as specialists in imaging, and all that together helps us, you know, guide the diagnostic process um, in the best possible way. And so, if if you just think about your job as, you know, saying what you see uh, on the imaging and just using that, you know, set of information, you know, that's that would be under leveraging everything that's in front of you and you know everything that you can make use of, you know, with your expertise. Uh, to, to make the best, you know, the, the, the greatest potential contribution you can to patient care um, in your work. I think it's important to also recognize that the patient history is more than what is provided as the indication for the study. A lot of times, and actually there's been research to show that the vast majority of times those indications are incomplete. They're missing a bunch of important information, pertinent positives, negatives, as well as key patient history factors that would impact how you would interpret the study. Um, and they're actually incorrect, like frankly misleading a significant proportion um, of the time. So you have to recognize that what is auto-populated or drawn into the report, you know, dictation software automatically is, is usually insufficient and sometimes actually counterproductive to doing a good job in terms of being a part of that diagnostic process. So it is really good practice to always double check what that indication is and to look further and really understand the full of the patient context. It, it can be useful almost to recognize that, you know, imagine you're imagining that, you know, in uh, that, you know, for if you think back to the times when you were an actual, you know, uh, had exposure to frontline clinical care. You ha imagining what sort of like brief blurb, a presentation of the patient, all the relevant factors. You know, understanding their course of care, 
present complaints, past medical history, current lab, other imaging study, you know, uh, other testing findings. Um, all that together impacts really how we, you know, what what we find on imaging and, and what we, or rather, how we're going to interpret what we find on imaging. So all that is really important. So walking into an imaging study without that un understanding is walking into, you know, image interpretation or the job of the radiologist basically blind. Um, and, and so I think it's really good practice, and I make it a point myself, to basically understand every single patient that I do, you know, some sort of medical imaging interpretation on. Um, I, I, you know, uh, kind of to that end, kind of other considerations is that it's, ver it's a very common error to um, either just look at the current study and forget to look at a prior study or even just to think that you can, you know, especially patients who are imaged very frequently, short-term follow-up, whether for acute abnormality or following, you know, known abnormality, just like in oncologic care, um, to only look at the most, pre you know, recent study. It's very, it's good practice to look at multiple priors, even across different modalities, and even put together, in some cases, imaging findings across various body parts and kind of get this, again, global view of the patient. Um, uh, to really help inform what you're going to say about the present study. Um, th th there's going to be a lot of times, you know, uh, where medical imaging is requested for a specific indication, but the clinical team it really has a host of different concerns, and sometimes they are not even able to articulate or have time to write down what the real concern is. So sometimes, just understanding the broader context of the patient will allow you to answer questions that the clinical team should be asking or you know, would have asked if they had thought to actually write it down. Um, and, th th and that's another you know, further way to really understand what is going, you know, how to actually add value in being a, you know, part of that diagnostic process. A part of understanding the role of the radiologist uh, as you know, integral to the diagnostic process is recognizing that even for, you know, medical imaging that looks normal or stably abnormal or negative, um, there is an opportunity, you know, in those sorts of circumstances to actually add value, to, act, to uh, you know, provide management changing calls and insight. So how is that possible? Is that sometimes a negative study is actually unexpected. Uh, you know, think about something like, uh, you know, ultrasound, transvaginal pelvic ultrasound in a patient with a positive pregnancy test where you would expect to see, um, you know, a gestational, you know, a gestational sac or, or, or the pregnancy. You know, think about um, uh, things where you're looking for a foreign body or where you're expecting to see uh, an explanatory pathology, but then it's negative. Um, and the, the imaging study is negative. So, you know, having really understanding what's going on with the patient really informs how we even dictate normal or negative studies. Um, you know, normal or, or negative studies can be looked at in new light if new clinical information comes to light or if there is um, clinical radiologic discordance, okay? And it's especially essential to also recognize that, you know, if there are abnormalities on a radiologic exam, you know, the literature basically says that uh, there's, uh, you know, a, a non-zero chance that people are missing findings. So even if prior reports are, you know, basically unremarkable, that doesn't mean that you, you know, even if the patient looks the same, that you won't find something if you look carefully. Uh, you know, the, the basic, the, the kind of baseline error rate for all medical imaging is estimated in the three to 5% range. And, but if there is say an underlying abnormality or there it's a positive study, the rate of missing or, you know, uh, people making an error can be as high as 30%, you know? So if you just look with fresh eyes, you can find things that other people looking at priors have not found um, just because you're a new set of eyes, just because you're a different perspective, just because you have new information. Um, that's kind of a really important thing, especially as the clinical context changes between prior studies and the current. Um, and you, it's, it's important to recognize also that sometimes, you know, stable exams uh, may really, you know, things that look the same between imaging studies may just represent subtle changes that are, you know, uh, suffi you know, sufficiently difficult to detect that that particular imaging study is not sufficient to, you know, pick up 
a slight interval change, whether that be because of the technique factors, limitations, short interval follow-up. And that's something you really want to keep in mind as a global theme as we do medical uh, imaging interpretive work. Um, you know, if, 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 if you're expecting, you know, let's just say, you know, a patient comes in and there is, you know, uh, let's just say there's concern for acute appendicitis or acute, you know, uh, you know, an acute abdominal process and you have a frankly negative study, you don't find something, you know, uh, that's something to, that's, that's a reason to look closer. You know, I, anytime you're expecting, you know, the clinical picture is very concerning and, and, and medical imaging where you expect to find an abnormality is unrevealing that, you know, is a, is a possible discordance and that should prompt you to look closer and to really sort out what is the differential diagnosis of the patient's complaints that would appear on imaging. And can we clearly, very specifically, go through that list and exclude those things? And if not, think about what possibly else could be going on. Are there alternative explanations? Um, it's essential to get a sense, um, to understand also that, you know, as a physician, as a, you know, radiologists are physicians that have to put together that whole of the clinical presentation, history, vitals, the patient exam, the clinical impression, labs, findings in surgery, op notes, all these sorts of things go into how we can understand the patient through imaging or with the context of imaging, um, you know, specialized uh, understanding of medical imaging. Um, you know, you, you have to recognize also that, you know, and this is especially important for trainees who are reading textbooks and learning about the field, uh, is that there is a whole lexicon, a whole language that is very specific to radiology, where, you know, and that, that, that language may not be significant to clinicians or may be unfamiliar to clinicians. So whereas in, you know, the finding sections of reports and in communication with other specialists in our field, um, we can use that kind of this specialized language. Once we are communicating in the impression section, in, you know, docu other documented, um, uh, you know, consultative work, we really want to translate and basically favor using just the language that is very, you know, that is specific to the clinicians that we are consultants for, okay? Um, and and it, it should be said also that continuing to read those charts, continue to stay up to date with, you know, the evolution and kind of the evolving nature and, and terminology used in the clinical services that we consult for um, helps us stay relevant and helps us keep, uh, you know, our work basically, uh, you know, from becoming like a commodity, you know, and so that is an investment that we should always be making. Um, you know, and, and there, there are going to be also circumstances where what we find on imaging, we have a special insight that really is going to change the course of care. And, and there are times where you are going, you know, the best thing to do is to call, uh, you know, one of the referring services and to really start raising, you know, raise a question and, and, and really suggest moving care in one way or another. If we are seeing something that is really going to, um, uh, you know, kind of in an unexpected way. Um, and this is both within the bounds of, uh, you know, recommended communication practices, but also in terms of consultation and providing greater depth of, um, you know, thoughtfulness around diagnosis that may be even beyond, you know, beyond things that we would write in a report, okay? Um, and, and so I, it, it should be also noted that a lot of radiologic um, kind of practice is very episodic. We interpret an, ima you know, an imaging study, we look at the priors, we see those in, in, in just a slice of their care. Uh, there can be quite a bit of use to, you know, especially if we're offering a differential diagnosis, if we are, you know, if a patient's ultimately going to go to surgery, if there's going to be, you know, a, a longer course of care to, you know, and, and this is not a paradigm that is very common, is to, you know, you know save cases and to follow up and, and see what happens in the course of patient's care and understand how what we call differentials that we offer, you know, suggestions that diagnosis of diagnosis that we put in reports, how that impacts the course of care. It's going to be something that keeps us relevant, that keeps us in touch, and that allows us to continue to offer value in the role that in the role and the roles that we play. Okay, so just to quickly sum up, you know, it's it's really important, you know, uh, in terms of the underlying conceptual, you know, mindset from a mindset broader kind of philosophical, what sort of work are we trying to do here? Um, 
sort of standpoint is you're trying to think about you know, you know that there's you know the patient on the other side of this trying to do the most as a physician first and then and to improve and be a productive part of that diagnostic process as much as possible and that there are many opportunities that that you know especially you know looking across the conventional bounds of the imaging study into other parts of the medical record into parts of the course of care um, where we can really make a difference and that's something i think is that is worthwhile to always keep in mind